Hi everyone, back here again for another video. Today, let's have a look at the Magic Keyboard. The Magic Keyboard, this is the second version of the wireless Magic Keyboard that Apple bundled with the Macs, the desktop versions, but can obviously be also used with other Apple devices like iPhones and of course iPads. The first version was released way back in 2011, while this one was released since 2015, and Apple still sells this. So after six years, and now we are in 2021, is it still worth it, and is it still magical? For me personally, I'm still captivated by the look and feel of the Magic Keyboard. The combination of the white keys and the aluminum body make it look really sleek. When I touch and carry this keyboard, I know it is of high quality. The body is built in one piece of aluminum, but very lightweight at the same time. The bottom is plastic and be ve can be very prone to micro scratches, but it doesn't feel it will break easily. This also has the sturdy rubber feet that for sure the keyboard will not move at all while I type on it. Apple built this slimmer than the previous one called the Apple Magic Wireless Keyboard. This looks almost the same as the previous version, but this comes with internal rechargeable batteries, so no need for the AA batteries like the old one. For me, this noticeable difference made the Magic Keyboard modern and timeless, though it still uses the lightning cable. But anyway, all of us Apple users for sure have more than one lightning cable to charge this with. Another thing that Apple made this timeless is the price. They haven't changed the pricing for this keyboard since 2015, so it still costs $99. Go check out some links I added in the description box below for some of the Magic Keyboard on sale in Amazon which can cost less than $99. These are the refurbished or what Amazon calls as renewed items. So using the Magic Keyboard with my iPad almost gives me the same experience as my iPad Magic Keyboard. I say almost because as we know, the iPad Magic Keyboard connects to the iPad soon as just I attach it together. As for this wireless Magic Keyboard, I need to pair it by Bluetooth. Here's the process I do. First, I turn on the keyboard and the power button is here at the back and the green color shows it's on. Second, I need to pair it to my iPad by going to the Bluetooth settings. Sometimes I don't see the Magic Keyboard's name right away, so what I do is I'll press this eject key here. Then once the name is showing, I then tap the Magic Keyboard name, and then it's paired with my iPad. I mentioned earlier that this can also be used with the iPhone, but what's not so intuitive with this is that if I have paired this to my iPad already, and I want to switch to my iPhone, it's not as simple as turning off the Bluetooth on my iPad, or just turning off the keyboard. I have to click on forget device from my iPad and only then can I pair it to my iPhone. And going back to use it again with my iPad, I have to do the same process. As for the battery life of the Magic Keyboard, I can just say that it is amazing. Apple says it can last 1-2 to two months between charges, but I guess that depends if you use it every day or not. I don't use this every day, so I have extended this battery life for a very, very long time. I use this a few times at work, switching between my K380 and my K480, but the battery is still at 50 plus percent. When I used this on my typing test video, it was around 57 percent. And even before that video, I haven't charged it since. So yes, the Magic Keyboard's battery life is very much comparable with my Logitech K380. It lasts for a very, very long time. I can see the battery percentage of the keyboard through the widget on my home screen. To add this widget, simply long press on the home screen, click on plus on the top left, and then look for battery. I choose the medium-sized widget and 
add just right below my shortcuts. So now I can quickly view the battery percentage of the Magic Keyboard. Now, as for the typing experience, I must say that I really like the typing feel on this keyboard. Are you interested to hear the typing difference of this Magic Keyboard with the iPad Magic Keyboard? Let me know in the comments below and maybe I will make a dedicated video on comparing these two Magic Keyboards. The Magic Keyboard has low-key travel of 1mm, that is according to Apple. So, the key clicks are subtle but very satisfying. When I typed on my two Magic Keyboards, what I noticed are this. First, the key travel on this wireless Magic Keyboard is a bit higher. Second, the typing clicks are louder and it could be because of the chiclet keys with, combined with the metal, but both use the same scissor mechanism. Third and last, this is slightly bigger square keys which I don't mind having bigger keys as I can type anyway properly on the smaller keys of the iPad Magic Keyboard but this may be a factor for those with the bigger hands so again if you want me to make a dedicated video comparing these two Magic Keyboards let me know in the comment section down below of course I will not have a video without including some of my favorite keyboard shortcuts. Let's have a look at the function keys first. I know these are not shortcuts, but it helps me work better on my iPad and maximize the functionalities of both my iPad and this keyboard. We do have the escape key here. Then the F1 and F2 are for adjusting the brightness, while F3, F4, F5, and F6 don't do anything on the iPad. It should work on Macs, I believe. Then the media controls are from F7 to F12. And the eject button, it's still there for some reason. Next is my favorite shortcut, which is doing the spotlight search by doing command plus the spacebar. I do this when I need to open other apps or even do simple conversions or searches. Next shortcut is to take the screenshot by doing Command Shift and 3. Or you could also do Command Shift and 4, and that will automatically bring you to the markup page. And then you can edit it, crop it, even add text on the screenshot, and then save it or delete it. To change languages on the keyboard, I have set mine on the function key. I can change to use the caps lock key instead, but I prefer to use it for caps lock purposes only. So this option in the general settings to use the globe for emoji, this is equivalent to the function key here. So if I enable this, I can only switch to emojis, but I turn this off, then I can switch to other languages. Next, to quickly move around your document, use command and arrow left and right to move the cursor at the beginning or at the end of the line. Hold on shift along with the command arrow left and right to highlight a line. Then the usual formatting shortcuts like command B to bold, command U to underline, and command I to italics also work. Holding the option and then pressing arrow left and right is to move the cursor to the next words. So you don't need to do an arrow one letter at a time. And then to highlight a bunch of words in between the line, hold on the shift key along with the option and arrow left and right. So hope this video helps you get more information on this magic keyboard now that we are in 2021, maybe it will help you decide if you're thinking to get one. Don't forget to check out some links in the description box for some of the refurbished or renewed Magic Keyboard on sale in Amazon.
or if you already have it, maybe this video will help you decide to keep it like me, as it is still working well. The battery life is amazingly long lasting, and the timeless beauty of this keyboard will stand the time. So that's it. Thanks for watching.